Yeah! Ugh, I'm freaking back, baby. It's been, well, technically not that long, but it felt like a while. In my last video, I tried to make Kingdom Come a terribly hard game, and I succeeded. Well, I failed, but I succeeded in making the challenge. That was a lot of interesting when I put it like that. But this time, instead of making Kingdom Come a terribly hard game, I'll be making it a terribly hard game in a different way. Instead of taking game mechanics away and adding restrictions on top of restrictions, I'm rejecting modernity. I'm returning to caveman. I'm done pretending like stainless steel was the be-all end-all. Iron is overrated and heavy. Patui. Bamboo. Shampoo. With sulfates. Yucko! No more engineering. No more state-of-the-art weaponry. I'm returning to my roots. Can I beat Kingdom Come Deliverance with the wooden training sword. Okay, but wouldn't a caveman use a club? Shut up! This is my video! F*** you! And anyway, I'm caveman. Stick bigger stick stick better stick stick. What? Alright, jokes aside, due to the combat in this game, I want to talk about the wooden training sword for just a moment before we hop in. Stats play an important factor, but the bigger focus is your health to stamina relationship. If you've got stamina to spare, you can take a hit with no problem at all. But if you're starting to forget what mommy's face looks like, you'll be meeting with her soon enough. Weapon stats dictate how much stamina they'll drain before you worry about health. Here's the wooden training sword stats. Pretty sh**. And because of these stats, I have almost no chance of depleting anyone's stamina enough to do any damage whatsoever. There's only one way I could possibly go about this playthrough. Come out swinging, fast and hard, don't let up. But looking at these stats, surprisingly they could be worse. And funny thing about that is, they can be. Notice how that's the wooden training longsword? Yeah, here's the short sword. That would be horrible to use. And now you're thinking, Rainy, why don't you use the short sword? And some of you may already be on the right track thinking to yourself, well, obviously there's no way to get the short sword if he's not using it. And actually, I lied. You're not on the right track because there is a way to get it, but it's too far in the game to make a challenge video about it. Okay, well, can't you just cheat it into the game? No. Yes, I'm just not going to do it. So how do you plan on getting the wooden longsword if you're not going to cheat? Glad you asked, because I'm not going to go into detail on how to get it right now. Currently, our objective is to not hurt anyone with a weapon that isn't our fists, and even then we're going to keep fist fighting to a minimum. And because this part of the game is boring, we're going to move past it quickly. I blasted through Scalots, and on my way out, I really wanted to know what happens if you don't save Teresa from the Cumans, but my gooey gumdrop tender inner baba just couldn't do it. I've looked at speedrunning videos so I could learn how to blast through this game faster, but it kind of just seems like the old find the shortcuts and see who can get through the shortcuts the fastest. So I took an alternate route to Talmberg. Not very effective, but it made me feel like I was doing something cool. And yes, I am editing out the cutscenes. I have absolutely no reason to do this, so don't ask. <laughs> Tomberg was quick, Scallops was quick. Just so you know, I didn't attack anyone there, and I made sure to let Runt have his way with me. During the dream sequence, I figured I'd get some free levels from the women, but they didn't run away like they usually do. They stuck around for a little bit, like they had some sort of vapulation fetish. It's a dream, okay? Can't a boy dream? <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. Before heading to the castle, I went to the bathhouse and made Henry K-Man. <gasps> and if I'm being honest, this was not my line of reasoning while I was playing the game. So just forget about the mustache. I trained swords, I shot bows, I had to let Capon win. Lame. But no biggie because I got to hand his to him later. Yo, do put the ah! huh? 
Huh? Couldn't hunt, whoop de doo and I was about to untie Capon, but then I thought for a moment. I'm gonna need money for, uh, something, and so after some trial and error, I managed to knock out both Cumans and steal their belongings. In return for bringing Capon home, I was offered a free ball crushing, <laughs> but more importantly, I was given a horse, my ticket to getting the challenge weapon. Meaning, now I can tell you how to get it too. First, we head to Ushitz. There, we find the only person in the game who carries a wooden sword outside of combat, Father Godwin. While the game does prevent you from knocking out or pickpocketing important NPCs, the game does not prevent you from fighting them. So we initiate combat with Godwin while he's playing with his wood, and he'll begin to follow us with a sword in his hand. And he should follow us with his sword in his hand. He follows us with his... He follows with his sword in his... You know what? We'll try it like this. Oh my god, no! Where's my f***ing sword, you fuggy fart? He followed... He followed... Please! <laughs> okay, so, unfortunately, Godwin is senile and delusional, and doesn't see me as a threat without a weapon, so our only option is to hit him with a real one. And apparently I got so mad I took all my clothes off, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, you initiate combat with Godwin, and he'll chase you. Lead him to the nearby field, and continuously ram him with your horse, and he'll inevitably surrender, leaving his weapon on the ground. And now you have the wooden training longsword. After that headache, I marked a waypoint and set out to beat Ginger's ass. When I found him, he did probably the most innocent thing you could do in these situations. It's not my fault. There was nothing I could have done to help. I was frozen solid. I couldn't even open my mouth. I couldn't even get a peep out. They would have killed me if I'd said anything. I couldn't stop what happened. I'm not to I listened to him very carefully and told him everything is okay. It's going to be all right. I even told him I'll go deal with the scary bandits that have been scaring him. Now, whether that's true or not doesn't matter, because I didn't say I'd let him know when they're gone. And so, there Ginger will stay. In that hut, in the middle of the woods, with no one. There he will remain left to wonder if I was successful and he could return home, or if I had fallen and the cutthroats were still out there, roaming, hunting for him. Any but, now that I have some free time, it's off to training. A lot of training. Afterwards, I went to go test my skills on a nearby bandit camp, and you know what? I'm gonna cut this whole essay I wrote about this part and sum it up with a good old fashion, it didn't quite go my way. I will have you know that I was quite sour after my loss. So sour that I went back and made a bane potion to put on my sword. You know, so when my sword cuts someone, the poison will help kill them. I gave up in the end until one of the bandits chased me onto the road. It was just one bandit. I could take him. Easy, no problem. And it was no problem. I was epically whooping this boob until he decided to run away. Now, at this rate, I'm like a malnourished bear who got fucked out of his hibernation feast, so I took off after him. I caught up with him and started clapping his sh until it became apparent that it was one big insurance fraud scam. Anywho, off to Ujits. After an apparent suicide attempt, I decided to f After f***ing, I decided to preach. And now we're tasked with finding Riki of Ledechko, one of the very few time-sensitive quests in the game. If we're not fast enough, Runt's men will find him first and beat him nearly to death, meaning we don't get to fight them. So we should really be quick about this. But, quick pit stop. Are you f***ing kidding? I ran into the faint-hearted knight and figured I could duel him. Why not? And I gotta say, it my has come to my attention that this rant is better saved for later. 
Stop hitting the fucking mic with your nose, you fucking fat ass. I won the duel, but my own greed got the best of me, so get what you fucking deserve, I guess. Hey, listen, I know we're like, I don't know, halfway through, give or take, who cares? But can I just say real quick that the dog has been useless this entire fucking playthrough. I hate this dog. Okay, so watching this over, I kind of can't believe what happened. So I beat him in the duel, then I beat him in the mugging following. And before I could kill him and take his loot, he beat me with his bare hands. And he may have knocked me out cold, but the game didn't send me into the unconscious stage. I just had a little lie down. So when I got back up, I could still knock him out and take his stuff. So ha, who's the real winner? I found out where Riku was hiding, so I'd better hurry up so I can help fight the bandits. But I should probably heal so I can help in the fight. Wouldn't want to go in with no health. But I should probably make sure my sword is nice and sharp for the fight. Wouldn't want to go in with a dull weapon. But I should probably pay off my loans. Wouldn't want to go in with debt on my conscience. But I should probably take Teresa on a date. Wouldn't want to go in without a love to fight for. But I should probably train. But I should probably go shopping. But I should probably pick some flowers. But I should get some rest. But I... Oh, fuck! Ricky might be dead. <sighs> Mercy. I'm sorry, but there's no help for you in this world. Not anymore. I... I know. Help me. To the next one. Please. Clearly, Riki did not read the title of the video. I'll I'll do my best. Yo! Uh, 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 ah! Got him. Now onto finding Timmy and finding out where the enemy's encampment is, which was a lot easier than I thought. <laughs> that was a really bad one. And it tasted bad. I told Morcock where Timmy was, and took a little longer than I'd like to beat Radon, but once I did, it was a race of who got to Timmy first. I won, of course, but the bandits were very close behind, so I mashed through Timmy's dialogue as fast as I humanly could, and got the hell out of there, and reported to Radzig. On my way, I saw Morcock and his crew slowly making their way to the Colbins farm, it was kind of like watching the bullet travel towards Kennedy's head, and I had the power to stop it, but decided not to and let nature take its course. In hindsight, I shouldn't have left because now I don't get the second half of my reward for telling Morcock where Timmy was, but it's okay because in the end, I got a reward of my own. After some more training, I went to the herbalist and saw that he was selling frankincense. Now, I've never seen this before, so I looked it up. It's useless. It has absolutely no purpose. In the game files, it's suggested that it was supposed to be an ingredient, but they just never made a use for it. Why it's in the game, I have no idea, but naturally, after reading that, I bought one because hell yeah. I went to make some potions, but I took a break because I was hungry. Oh, never mind. Anywho, I made it to Probislavitz, and on my way around the back, I found this little jungle gym I've never noticed before. I was fully convinced that there had to be some sort of trinket or treasure at the end of this epic parkour setup, but at the end, or at least as far as I could get, was just a barrel with nothing in it. So, whatever. I managed to burn nearly all the cumin arrows, but I only got to poisoning one food pot. They roughed me up pretty good, but I managed to get out of there. And once I was out of combat, I fast traveled to Merhoyed, which left me with literally three health, and I have no bandages. Fortunately, I had a marigold decoction, so I hurried my report to Radzig and rushed to Townberg to buy bandages before I bleed out. Oh my gosh! So shaken up from that close call, I went to the bathhouse to get myself touched. Timmy's wake up, Timmy! You gotta wake up, Timmy! It's important! Timmy, please wake up! 
And here we are. Our favorite part of the game for these challenges. It was going well, mostly on account of the fact that I don't really have to do any work. I got to push some people around, but none of the real damage came from me. During the last challenge, when I spent 10 hours on this fight, I learned that there's a hay bale right here that you can light on fire to obscure the enemy archer's view, forcing them to come down. However, even after I learned that, I never brought a torch with me, but I have one now so we can finally make use of that. And honestly, if I hadn't found out about that hay bale, I probably would have had to end the challenge here. There's no way in hell I could beat this many archers, let alone one, and I had an entire army behind me. The battle at the gate really had me worried because I couldn't use a bow to take out the archers picking off soldiers. If you lose too many guys, the game decides you lose. And I don't know what happened, but they got pushed back on the ramparts and were just too stupid to take a few steps forward, so a few of them couldn't hit anyone. Whenever I had a little free time, I was looting corpses so I could sell their gear afterwards for some shmoney. And I was slightly encumbered, but I didn't want to lose any of the gear I just nabbed, so I dropped small things and ate a bunch of food. Which was a bad move. See, now my nourishment is nearly full, so I can only drink a few potions. Which is fine, because I only want the Lazarus potion, health, and the Buck's blood potion, stamina. I would love to say we're off to a great start, but 20 seconds in, Runt takes half my health bar. And I would love to say that's why we take the Lazarus potion, but he epic noob pwned me before my potion could do anything. Okay, whatever. Take two, and I gotta say, my strat for fights with any weapon has always been relatively the same, and if anything, with my logic, it should work extremely well with this playthrough. I'll wait for their first attack and parry, leaving them open to a typically free combo, and maybe if I'm feeling a little crazy, I'll hit them with a second different combo. Then I back away while they recoup, causing them to have to run after me, which almost guarantees them leading into an immediate attack. So I parry, leaving them open and so forth, but if they don't attack, I'll clinch them, pushing them away, allowing me to either attack if I have stamina, or back up if I don't, rinse and repeat. So there's very few and small chances for the opponent to regain any stamina. So why don't they lose health when I'm using the wooden sword? Like, okay, yeah, it's a wooden sword, but the damage is essentially a super lightweight bludgeon, right? But sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And it seems to not work more often on armored opponents, which would make sense in some aspect, but at the same time, wouldn't their heavy armor reduce their stamina regen, causing them to take more damage from my quick and relentless barrage of attacks? <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. Look at me beating him up. Nothing. Look at me hitting these combos. Nothing. And look at me lose everything. I fought him for 15 minutes and didn't make a dent in his health. Man, I'm not even kidding. After seeing that, I was about to give up. But I thought, maybe there's something I'm not doing. There's probably something I'm not doing. Maybe I need to be more aggressive. Maybe I need a different potion. Maybe I just didn't want it enough, you know? So after looking on Google at other people's approaches to the runt fight, I had a new strat in mind. So I hopped back in and took up Joy's Rage Potion along with the Buck's Blood. I deal extra damage and I have extra stamina. What could go wrong? Raring to go, I led Runt into the touchy time corner and took him to Pound Town for a good few minutes. Okay, well that didn't work. So I went back to the good old bread and butter. Every time I backed away, I was checking his health bar to see if even a pixel was missing. Nothing. So we carry on, nothing interesting really happens. You know, countless times go by where he totes should have taken damage, but whatever. And as we come to the finale of the battle, that is to say I'm dying, I notice something... off. Is there supposed to be a gap there? 
Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did I... Did I do damage? Okay, hold up. This might be huge. So I die, and I load up the footage, and find where the damage was dealt. Well, I check to see if any damage was dealt at all. And yeah, I did damage him. Here he has the health back, so it's somewhere between here and here. Okay, we're getting closer. It's somewhere around here. Okay. Okay, he's kind of losing it. I'm also losing it. Oh. Uh... Uh, <laughs> okay. So I accidentally put my sword away at one point, and in the panic, I, uh, I punched him. And that's where the damage came from. <laughs> huh. Yeah. So it's like impossible and undoable and it's like an 18 karat run of bad luck and the game was rigged from the start and no, but seriously, I do believe it's possible. I want it to be possible. I just didn't see any sign or proof of getting past that fight. Look at me, I'm 0 for 2 on these challenges, but like I said before, I have fun with these. Maybe I'll try like a fist only playthrough, but I feel like that'd be too easy. I don't know. But if you have any ideas, literally any at all, even if they're ass and dog sh and just for the memes, put them in the comments. I need ideas. And hey, maybe your silly idea would be perfect for one of these. Hold up. Now, I know I've only made now two of these types of videos, but I enjoy them and plan on doing a lot more of these. If it wasn't obvious, these videos are inspired heavily by Mitten Squad. Mitten Squad did a ton of challenge videos, mostly on Fallout games, but every now and then he'd play other games. Wii Sports, Super Mario World, Red Dead Redemption, Bioshock, Borderlands, you know. Now, don't get confused. While the name is Mitten Squad, it was only one person. Paul. His clever, dry sense of humor and... <laughs> ability to fail challenge runs and still post them, inspired me to make challenge videos myself. Not that I use the same humor as him, no. He, uh, he was one of a kind. I watched his videos all the time. All the time. And I still will, I just have to take a small break. If you haven't heard, Paul of Mitten Squad has since passed away, unfortunately. So, I guess I'm just trying to say thank you, Paul, for what you've given us. You are truly irreplaceable and better yet unforgettable. You deserved so much better. And I hope to see you again one day. And with that being said, please, take care of yourself. Have a good one.